Now, as we heard earlier, the federal government is facing increasing criticism for trying to rush new laws through Parliament aimed at helping law enforcement agencies access encrypted messages. The bill is being examined by a bipartisan committee, but the Coalition is hoping to have the bill put to a vote this week, the final sitting week for the year. Lizzie O'Shea is from the Alliance for a Safe and Secure Internet, which formed in response to the proposed bill. It's made up of groups representing tech giants like Facebook and Google, consumer groups and digital privacy advocates. She joins us now from Melbourne. Lizzie O'Shea, welcome. Uh, so what do you think of this dis political discussion now around the pressure to get this done by the end of this week? To me, this is astonishing. I think this is a shrill Prime Minister and a government under considerable pressure, and they're using this bill as a smokescreen to conceal their own incompetence. This bill is extremely broad. It contains very strong powers, and there are a huge number of potential unforeseen consequences that may arise if this bill is passed. It hasn't had the... Uh, there hasn't been the proper opportunity to consider all this because there's been significant pressure by the Prime Minister and Peter Dutton to push this through quickly. I think that would be a terrible mistake. So I think what Labor is doing is standing strong and I'm pleased to see it. So what are some of those unforeseen consequences that could possibly happen that you've identified if this bill is passed in its current form? So encryption uh, serves as a protection on communications, not just between two individuals, but actually for all sorts of systems in our digital infrastructure. So that might be banking, it might be mass transit, it may be our electricity grid. Encryption protects those digital systems from attacks by nefarious actors, uh, whether it's criminals or state-sponsored terrorists. This bill is designed to weaken that encryption in the name of supporting our national security agencies. But in my view, uh, if we define national security as synonymous with passing this bill, we're ignoring the fact that our digital infrastructure and the safety of our digital infrastructure is actually critical to our national security. Uh, so I think we could be opening the doors for all sorts of nefarious hackers to gain access to our encrypted systems if we let this bill sail through Parliament. So is there any midway here that, that can be reached through negotiation where uh, security agencies in Australia can get access to the messages they need to prevent terrorist attacks while these other areas like banking um, and ma mass transit are protected? Well, look, there may well be a midway. Uh, in my view and the view of the alliance that I'm with, in its current form, this bill should not be passed. But part of the problem with this is we haven't had a process that's been given the time to properly consider it. We've seen hundreds, thousands of submissions, actually. We coordinated uh, nearly 15,000 submissions from the general public about this bill in an extremely truncated timetable. And instead of properly considering the concerns of experts, of industry, of civil society organisations, what we've seen is, seen is the government pushing very hard in a way that I think is disgraceful, really, to try and push this bill through before Christmas so they can do some political point scoring. And I just don't think that's good enough. I think we should be listening to people who've got concerns about it, incorporating those concerns into a process where we think about all the aspects of the bill and work out what is and isn't possible while also maintaining the security of our digital systems. And I'd like to see that happen rather than this rushed process by a, a, a frantic Prime Minister. So tell us in layman's terms how the conditions on this existing bill would open up these systems like banking and mass transit to possible hackers? So when you create a weakness in an encrypted system for one purpose, even if that's a very good purpose, it can be used for any purpose at all and it, it becomes an extremely valuable piece of information. So we've seen this before. The NSA, the uh, arguably the most sophisticated national security organisation in the world, has had various vulnerabilities they knew about, for example in a Microsoft system. They kept that secret because they wanted to use it for national security purposes and then that weakness was lost or stolen by criminals and the result of that people may remember was the WannaCry worm. It was a piece of ransomware that took over computers across the globe and did things like shut down the NHS so people couldn't access their medical records and diverted ambulances. That's something that the NSA knew about and refused to disclose because it was using it for its own purposes. I think the same is true here. If we allow national security agencies to deliberately create weaknesses in our encryption, what that means is it becomes a hugely valuable tool for criminals and um, state-sponsored hackers, and they will use it to try and break into our systems and disrupt them. Mm. Uh, so it's very difficult to create a system that you can do that for a targeted purpose without doing it for all purposes. And that's why I think this bill is so dangerous. And so what's another way around that? 
There's all sorts of things I think we could do. Uh, we could, um, of course, uh, confine the powers. We could also have judicial scrutiny, for example. This bill contains no judicial scrutiny, no requirement for a warrant to build um, some of these technical uh, tools to circumvent encryption. To me, that's stunning. I think if the... But, but can I just pull you up on that? Even, even if there was judicial scrutiny of that to allow this to be done, your argument will, would still be that creates a weakness in the system which could be exposed by other operators anyway. So why, why would you be content if there was judicial scrutiny? So I think there are some aspects of the bill that are problematic in and of themselves. So the capacity to build tools to weaken encryption. Um, but I think we could also, there's plenty of ways in which technology companies work with law enforcement to hand over information when they need it for a specific purpose, provided there's a warrant, all sorts of other requirements that they're, right. de they're designed to fill. So I think it is possible to have tools that can help law enforcement and national security without undermining our encrypted systems. Mm. But that's not what's contained in this bill. And so how much more time is needed then as far as you're concerned with this to get it right? Right. Oh, well, I would like to see this at least pushed out beyond the end of this week. To me, it's stunning that a bill of this nature has only had a couple of months' consideration. It's 176 pages long. I'm not convinced that all the lawmakers who are considering this bill fully understand the implications or even the actual text of the bill. Uh, so I think we, we need at least until um, next year in order to properly consider it. I would like to see more hearings where we hear from encryption um, experts. I also think industry is extremely alarmed for good reason. Many of them haven't even been consulted at all. And we saw that on uh, last week in front of the committee, there was a company that's one of the largest technology providers in Australia that was given no time to consider the bill prior to being put before the parliament. And to me, that's shocking uh, that there would be no consultation on this. So I think we need plenty of time to think about this properly, to work out how we can avoid um, the pitfalls of the current bill, while also uh, addressing the concerns of law enforcement and national security, and making sure that we make use of the uh, large amount of expertise that exists within Australian society uh, to consider this bill so we don't pass something with unintended consequences and we sleepwalk into a digital yeah. dystopia. What about the government's argument that they're concerned there is a heightened risk over, over the festive period and that's why they want this done now? Well, look, I think you'd probably need to speak to the Labor Party about that. I know that there was some uh, attempt to try and negotiate some kind of temporary solution to deal with that, which I'm not privy to, but that was apparently rejected by the government. What I would also say is that if there's no clear evidence from anyone in law enforcement that we're in any worse position now than we were before this bill was introduced, say, last year at this time last year. So I find some of these concerns to be um, slightly politically motivated, to be honest. I can't understand why we're suddenly in this heightened um, period where it's it's desperately important that we pass this bill before uh, the end of the year when we've been um, without this bill for a long time and been uh, been fine. And so what I would say is that if we're going to do something as serious as this, we probably need to think about it before we do it. And the other, the other, of course, component of this is that encryption is not actually a barrier to our security or to law enforcement intelligence doing their job. It's actually a form of protection to protect everyday people as well as the systems that we were talking about before from attacks by criminals. So to understand encryption as being this huge barrier is not the right way to see it. It's a, it's a form of protection for our digital systems. That includes people like you and me, but it also includes uh, infrastructure that we rely on to do our, to, our, to get, go about our lives every day. Okay, Lizzie O'Shea, thanks so much for talking to us this morning from Melbourne. Thanks for having me.